Hello, I'm Anna, and this morning we're going to look at some of Karl Lagerfeld's most iconic looks for Chanel throughout the pages and history of Vogue. This amazing trompe l'oeil dress is from Carl's very first collection for Chanel, where there was a lot of apprehension. Would he throw out all the codes of Coco? Would he destroy the most beloved French designer? But of course he didn't. He took all that she did and sort of had some fun with it and pushed it. And I think that this dress really epitomizes that. So this very joyful picture of Naomi Campbell was part of a shoot that we did for her very first American Vogue cover. I love the combination of the traditional Chanel pearls with leggings. I think this is probably one of the most celebrated images that American Vogue has ever published. And this collection is what Carl called City Ballerina. And I think what we called Madonna meets Brando. And it was this incredible collection that was really this mixture of ball gowns and leather jackets paired with all the accessories that Chanel is known for, pearls, the gold jewelry, the bags. This is March 1994 in our post-grunge moment. And when you would visit Carl in the studio, he would always have a huge array of colorful pencils. And he told me at the time that this collection was based on the colors of those pencils. And of course, it was at a moment where everything went super short, super to the body, and it was a dramatic reaction against the layers of grunge and the bodies all being covered up. Well, this is part of a world famous shoot that I believe our features director at the time, James Truman, suggested. And Vogue decided to bring Sean Combs to Paris to the couture and photograph him with Kate Moss. And this particular picture was photographed in a paint studio. It's one of the few pictures which actually shows Kate alone because the dress itself was so perfect. This is another moment when Vogue invites an outsider, in a way, to the Paris Couture, because this was at a moment when celebrities were really not in attendance in the front row. Renee Zellweger had not yet reached her enormous heights of fame. She won a Golden Globe that year for Nurse Betty, and Bridget Jones, the first one, was about to come out, but we flew her immediately from receiving that Golden Globe right to the Salons of Paris. And this particular picture was taken at the Balmain show and she is wearing a Chanel jacket. And the reason we decided to put those two together is that Carl, and this is not so known about his history, was also for a brief moment, a designer at Balmain. And in fact, when Olivier Rustang joined Balmain, I remember Carl saying to him, Oh, we are both Balmain boys. So this is another moment when Vogue brought a famous character to Paris and shot them there. And this was with Annie. And I believe that Grace was the editor. And of course, this is Ben Stiller at the time of Zoolander and Stella Tennant wearing Chanel. I believe that Annie's thinking for this particular image was a sort of homage to Funny Face and also to Elliot Owen. This shoot of Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge inspired dresses created for Vogue by a number of different designers. This one obviously is Carl for Chanel, came out of a disaster. We were planning to shoot and had actually sent Annie all the way, I believe to Australia to photograph her on the set of Moulin Rouge, the great movie directed by the amazing Baz Luhrmann. And we came away from Australia with a fantastic shoot. And I remember being in Paris, I believe in, in October, when the phone rang, pre-cell phones, and I had an extremely apprehensive Baz Luhrmann on the phone telling me that the film was delayed. We went ahead and we ran the story anyway as a preview, but then when the movie came out, we loved it so much, we wanted to do something that was an homage to Moulin Rouge and to the looks that Catherine Martin Baz's wife had designed. So we asked a group of designers to create Moulin Rouge-inspired dresses. Because of Moulin Rouge, Chanel became very aware of 
what a brilliant filmmaker Baz was, and they asked him to make a small film of Nicole wearing the most beautiful dress that Carl designed. And even though it was a small film, Baz and Carl and Nicole treated it like it was an epic five-hour film. And there were many fittings, many meetings, many script discussions. And the opening itself was like the opening of Lawrence of Arabia or Moulin Rouge. There was a history between Grace and Annie and all of us at Vogue about creating magical portfolios for our holiday issues. And I think that this one, Alice in Wonderland, is probably the most magical. And again, it was the remarkable combination of Grace and Annie. Annie working together. And they decided to ask a number of designers to create looks around the idea of Alice in Wonderland. And Grace, in her great wisdom, decided they all should be blue. Then she and Annie cooked up the idea that all the designers would play different characters for Alice in Wonderland. So Lacroix came, Gautier came, John Galliano came. The one that kept refusing was Carl. Annie and Grace are two ladies who never give up. So in the end, he got so fed up with all their phone calls. He said, okay, I'll come at five o'clock in the morning, thinking that they wouldn't be there. But actually, they just stayed there all night and waited for him to come. He was shot alone. Natalia was added afterwards because they were so terrified that the pig would disturb the maestro. This is another example of Annie and Grace's brilliant storytelling. It was based on Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette with Kirsten Dunst playing the Queen. And we asked a number of great French couturiers to make dresses. Carl was someone who was deeply immersed in the 18th century. It was his inspiration for so many different collections. It's how he lived. It was his backbone. And this dress is photographed at Versailles on Kirsten. And they created all these amazing images in the dungeons, in the ballrooms, looking out onto the garden and recreating creating what Sophia was making in her film. So this is one of Irving Penn's great portraits. Very Charles Dickens, I think, in its feeling and the makeup and the atmosphere. And Carl was someone who was almost impossible to give a gift to, but he did truly admire the work of Irving Penn and held him in the highest regard. So I was able to persuade Irving to give this print to Carl as a present. And I was so proud when I saw it hanging in the studio for everybody to see, because that truly meant, because that's where Carl spent all his time was in the studio, that Carl loved it. And I think he loved the light, he loved the mystery. It's so evocative and strong, but a little bit sad, I think, at the same time. <laughs> So this shoot was a Tim Walker, Grace Coddington extravaganza. It was to celebrate or recognize the very sad closing of the Ritz Hotel for many, many years of renovation. We photographed the people that worked there. We photographed the flowers. We photographed all the rooms. And we photographed Kate, who was, I think, a very, very faithful customer of the Ritz here in this extraordinary room after, obviously, an exhausting day of shopping at Chanel. And I think this was particularly moving because Carl himself spent so much time at the Ritz. He had many shows there, many dinners, many celebrations. And I think the Ritz was a second home in a way for him. So this last image is a deeply moving picture of Carl towards the end of his life. And obviously he's sitting, working as he did every day at this desk that was so full and covered with every possible sort of book, things to draw with. There are probably a million iPads in there too. It was just like, you think he was gonna disappear under it. And in fact, years and years ago, I was at his house one night for dinner and we were in the dining room and we heard this incredible thud. We went next door and we saw that the desk that he had there, which looked exactly like this, had collapsed and the ceiling had fallen in under the weight of everything that Carl had on his beloved desk. 
to me, this shows the Carl that we know the best. Yes, he was glamorous, but when you go back to the quintessential Carl, he would always say, I'm just a dressmaker. And here he is creating. Thank you so much for joining us as we remember some of Carl's most iconic images in Vogue and looking forward to seeing you on May 1st to celebrate him again. <laughs>